love the dreamers. All of my direction comes in dreams. So if you learn to listen to your dreams, you can get a lot of strategy and you can get a lot of information that will help you get through life. So I would encourage everybody to be listening to your dreams. But what we're looking, what we're talking about today is, and I have notes everywhere, so just forgive me, guys. But uh, what we're talking about today is healing through dreams. And healing can come through your dreams. And it's very interesting because sometimes there are areas of your subconscious that you can't really get to, right? You're just, I mean, you only know what you know. So if you're not aware, come in, come in. If you're not aware of what's there, right? it's in your subconscious, then you don't realize there might be an issue that needs to be healed, but it's actually coming up in your dreams. And if you're not aware of, your, of the message, if you don't understand the message, then you don't know how to respond to it. You don't know what to do with that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some clues. So if you wanna take some notes, that'd be great. Or if you wanna record, that's great. But I'm gonna give you some really, uh, and I'm actually gonna post this video, if we get a good video, we'll post it on, how many of you are on Facebook? A few of you? Okay. Uh, there's a Facebook group called Dream Diva. I'll give you a card for that, where you can actually post dreams and comment on dreams. But I'll post this video so you can go and you can listen to it as many times as you like. Okay? You just have to answer three or four questions to get into the group, but it's no problem. So I want to start by telling you about a couple of dreams that I've had throughout my life that have really affected my well-being and my health. Now remember, anything that's going on in your emotional, your emotional life, right, is and your psychological, your psyche that's going to affect your physical body, right? So a lot of times when we're having physical issues, they're actually related to what's going on in other areas. Because what happens is your organs and parts of your body actually are places where um, issues will get triggered Though they lodge, your emotions get lodged. Say you have a wounding, say you're, as a child, you were, I'm gonna be a little bit drastic, okay guys, so that we, you really get the, you really get the gist of what we're saying. Say you're abused as a child, you know, uh, if you're spanked really hard or you're treated, you know, you're verbally abused by a parent, you know, as a child. Those things become a conditioning and a wounding that go throughout your life if they don't get deal, dealt with, correct? So what happens is those woundings and those emotions, they get lodged into different areas of your organs in your body and they stay there and they fester. And what happens is, you know how something will come up and you feel very passionate about it, it's like you're triggered by something? That's because some of that wounding is still lodged somewhere in your body. In that case, your body, you're physically, you're physically having health issues that are connected to emotional areas. But those emotional areas are actually coming up in your dreams. They're saying, hey, I'm here, right? We need to take care of this so that you can get healthy. So we don't want to ignore our dreams because so much of that is actually there. And what's interesting is you're busy going to the doctor. You're asking why your digestive isn't working well. You're asking why you're having joint pain. You don't understand what's going on. You're dizzy and you're, you're having some issues. And nobody can figure it out. And your dreams are saying, hey, hey, I've got the answer. Isn't that brilliant? The Creator made you where all of that is, is just there. It's, I'm, not, I'm not saying you don't have to go to the doctor. Hear me, hear me out here, right? I'm not, I'm not dissing the medical field or Eastern medicine or any of that. I'm saying the first thing I look at is my dreams because usually those issues are somewhere floating around in the scenarios of my dreams. So I'm gonna tell you about a couple of dreams that I've had. And then we'll talk about a couple of common dreams. And then we're gonna talk about how to process your own dreams. And then we're gonna talk about how to respond 
The response is very important, right? So you're going to get a lot of information. I'm going to try not to talk fast. If I talk too fast, and I do have a Texas accent, so I apologize for that. But just hold up a hand like this, and I'll slow down. It won't hurt my feelings. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Or if you don't understand my accent, now I'm not in South Africa today, but Denver, hopefully you guys will understand me, but you never know. So if I get to moving too fast, all you have to do is put up a hand, I'll slow down, I'll go back and repeat. Then we'll have a short Q&A at the end, and you guys, so if you have a question, you're going to want to jot that down so that you don't forget it, and at the end, you can ask me. Okay, so let's hold the questions to the end if you don't mind. So let's start with this. Years ago, I started having this recurring dream. How many of you have recurring dreams? Everybody has recurring dreams. Let me give you a quick 411. Any dream that you've had three times or more over your period, a period of your life, I'm not talking about in a week or a month or a six month period, right? I'm talking about over your life. Those dreams almost always connect to your destiny. You need to be listening to those dreams. Then, there are dreams that you're going to have in seasons. Like uh, in this season, this happened over a six month period. And I had this dream where I was waking up with like an like a, uh, someone attacking me, and they were attacking me from my back. Now what's down here? Kidneys. Hello. You've got very volatile organs here. This is a very volatile part of your body, and you can't protect yourself. It doesn't have a lot of protection. Now, remember that dreams, 99% of dreams are actually symbolic. So there's a metaphoric language that goes along with dreams, okay? So, back represents past. See how that works? A lot of it's just common sense. So, back represents past. Lower back, where those volatile organs are, that's a place where you're volatile, you're helpless, you're not able to respond, and so you'll begin to see as, we're speak, as I'm speaking how those things connect to areas in your life. Okay, and you'll start having these bells go off, all right? So, I, I was having this dream that someone was attacking me, and in the dream, this person has a, an old Gothic serpentine dagger, and he's just bludgeoning me right here. And I wake up, and I'm like, ah! Right, I'm, I'm responding with, like, it, it was happening so vivid. And I would wake up, and I would have severe pain in my lower back. The pain was there when I was awake. I was like, what the hey? This is not working. So I was having this dream like every other night or two or three times a week over this six month period. So I just sort of got into my closet. You know, I got into a quiet place and just started asking creator, what is going on? I need to know what's going on. This thing is not going away, right? Well, this is what's happening. Now, we know the Creator speaks all the time. And He's talking to you all the time. Now, if your ear is not trained to hear by the Spirit, right, then you might miss some things. But if we're sensitive, if our spirits are sensitive, then what happens is if we ask a question, you just watch, it works. You ask Creator a question, then all of a sudden, this idea kind of bubbles up in you. It's like, hmm, where'd that come from, right? And sometimes that idea is, well, you remember when you were a child and this thing happened? And it made you feel very volatile, helpless, unable to protect yourself. Well, those things began to come up. And it was more than one thing. It was like, it wasn't like any one specific situation, right? It was like several things over the six months. And so what I would do is I would deal with that. Now, to receive emotional or spiritual healing, there are a couple things you have to do. One of the things that you have to do is you really need to, now just stay with me, hang with me for a minute. 
one, two of the things that are most important in any sort of healing in, the, in a, a modality of getting, gaining emotional or spiritual healing comes from two things. Now, some of this happens, follow me, in your generational line. So all the people that went before you, epigenetics, right? All of the people that went before you, they may have had woundings that you're being affected by when you weren't actually in the scenario. You still with me? So there are generational issues sometimes, and sometimes it's something that happened directly to you, right? So the two things that clear, that clear those woundings away are this. Repentance and forgiveness. These are, that's the medicine for getting emotional, spiritual healing. Repentance, forgiveness, right? So, if my generational line, say, I use this example a lot, but say my mother uh, rode a horse when she was a little girl, and the horse uh, was running to the barn. He was conditioned, right? Pavlov's conditioning. He's conditioned to run to the barn. So he's running to the barn. She loses control. She falls off. Okay, she's got this trauma from riding horses. So the horse is a dapple, right? She's forever afraid of dapple horses. Now, I didn't have the experience, but because she went into fear and trauma about that and she never dealt with the wounding, through epigenetics, it came down to me, and I'm afraid of dapple horses, and I don't even know why. I know I'm stepping out of the box here, but just stay with me. It works like that sometimes. So sometimes when we repent, forgive, it's not about something you've done, and it's not about something that somebody was at fault for. It's about something that didn't get dealt with. So the repentance releases you. In other words, I can repent. I just ask Creator to repent to uh, to forgive me for coming into agreement with anything in my genetic line that caused me to be afraid of horses. That is not even my trauma. Right? So I repent and then I release forgiveness. So I release forgiveness toward my mother because she didn't get it dealt with and so it came down to me. And then I forgive myself because we make mistakes, right? For whatever reason, I wound up with it. I call that the addiction you never said yes to. <laughs> you know, the, anything in the generational line. You know, it's like, I'm not the one who opened the door, and I didn't say yes to it, so I don't understand why I'm the one that needs to deal with it. But honestly, if you want freedom, somebody's going to have to deal with it. And if Mama didn't, you will. Does that make sense? Still with me? Okay. So, repentance, forgiveness. So, during this course of six months, I keep having this dream. I'm being attacked. Somebody is bludgeoning me with a dagger, a serpentine dagger, in my lower back. I wake up from the dream and I'm panicked and I have severe pain. And it happens every time. It happens two or three times a week. So I keep going to Creator saying, Creator, what is going on? Spirit, talk to me. What's going on that this, this thing's not getting dealt with? I don't know what to do with it, right? So all of a sudden, I'll be sitting quietly meditating, and all of a sudden, something will bubble up with me. You know, like, like your mother had this wounding. Like, my, my mother, personally, was uh, physically abused as a child. So I, for some reason, I've never been physically abused, but I was always afraid of, like, you know, issues like that. And I really didn't ever have that experience in my family. See how it works? So then the Spirit would bring that up. So I repent on her behalf. I can repent for her. She's gone. But I can repent on her behalf, and I can repent for having agreed with any of it, the fear. You with me? For agreeing with the fear. And then I release forgiveness, and then it's gone for me. I'm done. 